So one issue that you've raised and a number of candidates have raised is this bizarre institution called the Electoral College, which every once in a while seems more frequently produces the anomalous result of the loser becoming the winner, but in every single election produces the result that the candidates running for president are focused on just a small number of states, the so-called swing states. So in 2016, 99% of campaign spending was in just 14 states, which means that candidates are worried about what those 14 states want, and those 14 states turn out to be, people in those states turn out to be older, they turn out to be whiter, their industry is kind of 19th century industry, this state accepted, of course, I'm here. Of course. Um, you know, there are seven and a half times the number of people in America in solar energy as mine coal, but you don't hear about solar energy because those people live in Texas and California. You hear about coal mining because those people are swing states. So you've talked about abolishing the Electoral College. Those of us who want to believe that change is possible here, how do we do it, given okay. 38 states are going to uh, be required? Larry, look, I mean, you raise, I mean, I think it's very hard to argue against what you said. Uh, Donald Trump lost the popular election by over three million votes. Is that correct? Donald Trump is president of the United States. That does not add up. That's wrong. Uh, you know, what I believe, and I think most people believe in, is democracy is the person who gets the most votes wins. I mean, it's not a radical idea. Trump did not get the most votes. In fact, he lost by a lot of votes. Yet he is president of the United States. And Larry raised the second issue that we don't talk enough about. And that is so many states in this country are ignored uh, during the campaign because either they're Democratic states or they're Republican states. All right. Um, not too many campaigns, candidates are going to be going to Vermont because Vermont is not going to vote for Donald Trump. That I can assure you. Um, and I'm increasingly convinced, by the way, that New Hampshire is not going to vote for Trump either. Uh, on the other hand, you know, it is very unlikely that Wyoming uh, or South Dakota is going to be voting for a Democratic can candidate. So what that means, as you indicated, during campaigns, uh, people go to those states where they have a chance to win. And whatever the number is, 12, 13, 15, whatever it may be, the so-called battleground states. And the point that Larry just made is then that distorts the campaign in the sense that the issues of many, many states that are either Democratic or Republican are not going to get a full hearing. All right, California is the largest state in this country. It is not going to vote for Trump. My guess is there'll be very little campaigning during the general election, okay? Largest state in America. And their needs, which are many, are not gonna be heard by the candidates. So I think that clearly what we have got to do is end a system which allows uh, a candidate who gets a minority of votes to become president, and a system which ignores the needs of over 30 states uh, in this country. And we can talk about how we go from there, because as you've indicated, it is in the interest of some to maintain the system. And there are a lot of ideas that are out there right now and, and uh, which will move us in that direction. But count me on board as saying that it is increasingly difficult to defend a system which allows a minority, a, a guy who got a minority vote to become president.